Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this image uploading system. Let me show you how it works. So let's go ahead and browse for some images. Now, currently these images are only queued in the front end, meaning they are not saved anywhere. So if I click on the refresh button, they'll get deleted off the screen. So let's go ahead and upload them again. This time we're going to drag and drop them because we are going to show you how to not only manually input images, but also how to drag and drop them. All right, so here they are. I'm going to go ahead and click this button to upload them to my server. And now they are saved in the server. So if I click the refresh button, they're not going to get deleted off the screen. If I want to delete one of these, all I have to do is click on this X and then click delete. All right, so this image has just been deleted off the server. If I click on the refresh button, only these are going to show up. All right, so let me re-upload this one. And as you can see, this one is queued on the front end. It's not actually saved. So let's click on upload to save it. In addition, I'm also going to show you how to filter out certain things. For example, if the user tries to upload a PDF file, a text file, or anything that is not an image. I'm also going to show you how to filter out images that are too big for what we're willing to accept. For example, I'm going to try to upload an image that is bigger than one megabyte, which is what I'm willing to accept. I'm going to click upload. And this is going to give us an error message saying that this file is a little bit too big for what we're willing to accept. All right. So this series is three parts. Part number one, we're going to show you how to upload images on the front end. Part number two, we're going to show you how to create a server so we can save the images in the file system. And part three, we're going to show you how to, instead of saving the images in the file system, we're going to show you how to save them in a database and in a third party location like Amazon Web Services. So you guys can hopefully build an enterprise grade application with millions of users. All right, let's get right into this tutorial. Hey guys, welcome to part two. In this tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to convert this project into a Node.js application. Now, some of you might be wondering why we need a technology like Node.js in order to do this. The reason is because we cannot build a server with vanilla JavaScript. We need another technology that is going to allow us to build a server. Okay. So before we begin, please make sure you have Node.js installed. And once you do, go ahead and click Terminal, New Terminal. And to create a Node.js application, you're going to type in npm init. Go ahead and click enter. And this is going to ask you a couple questions. They're not very important. Just click enter to skip them. All right, once you do that, you're going to see a file called package.json over here. So now we're going to install the dependencies that we're going to need for this application. To install those, we're going to type in npm install and we're going to install three dependencies one is express to build a server another one is molter molter handles multimedia and ejs ejs is a view engine that we can use so we can use javascript within our html file all right go ahead and click enter and this is going to take a couple of seconds now we're going to install one more package so once again we're going to type in npm install and this one is called Nodemon. But for this one, you're going to use hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev. Go ahead and click enter. And this is going to allow us to run our server without having to manually stop and start the server every time that we make an update in our application. All right. So once that's installed, go ahead and click on the package.json file. And right here where it says index, you're going to change this to server.js. And we're also going to delete this line here and we're going to replace it with start node server.js. And this is needed for deployment, but we're not actually going to deploy this application. So that's not going to be a big deal. Go ahead and copy that line. And you're going to replace that with nodemon and this with server. And this is needed for development purposes and you guys will see what this does in a moment now we're going to set up the proper folder structure for this application so let's go over here click on the bottom and you want to create a folder called public within that you're going to create another folder called uploads and this is where the images that the user uploads are going to go let's select the css folder and drag and drop it inside the public folder 
All right, let's click down here to get out of that folder. And we're gonna create one more called views. Within that, we're gonna create a file called index.ejs. And this is gonna replace our index.html file. So let's go ahead and open our index.html, copy the contents, and we're gonna place it within the index.ejs file. All right, we can go ahead and delete the index.html file now. All right, go ahead and click down here to get out of that folder, and we're gonna create one more file called server.js. All right, we can close these windows, and we're gonna go ahead and get started here with our server.js file. This is where we're gonna create our server. Let's bring in the packages that we just installed. Express is for creating our server. Multer is for handling multimedia. Let's also bring in the path module, which is built into Node.js. This is for working with the file and directory paths. We're also going to use FS, another built-in module. This is for interacting with the file system. Another built-in module, util. And this is for accessing the utility functions, such as this one here. Permissify. And this is for unlinking files within the file system. And you guys will see how we're going to use that in a moment. Let's create a port to run the application. Let's create an instance of the express package. Now we're going to use middleware so we can process the data that is coming in from the front end. Let's set the view engine. We installed EJS. You can choose a different one if you want. Let's get permission to get access to the public folder. Let's output a message when we run the server, letting us know that we're running this server successfully. All right, now that that's done, we can go ahead and run the server. So we're gonna type in npm run server. And the reason that we can do this is because we created this line of code here, server. So we're gonna be running this and it's gonna use nodemon to run the server.js application. All right, go ahead and click enter. And if you did everything correctly, you should see a message that says server started on port 3000. Now we're gonna create a get route to render the index.ejs file. All right, let's open up our browser and let's go over to localhost at port 3000 and you should see the application. All right, now I wanna show you guys the GitHub for Molter which is the middleware that we're gonna be using to upload images. If you guys can't find this, I'll leave a link in the description. And I want you to scroll down to the section where it says disk storage. Go ahead and copy this code and you're gonna paste it right under here. So notice that disk storage has two options, destination and file name. Destination lets us choose a folder where we wanna store the images and file name lets us choose a name for each one of the images. So let's go ahead and change the path here. We're gonna add public uploads. So now whenever the user uploads images, they're gonna be saved in this folder. All right, for file name, they created a unique suffix which contains a timestamp of 
when the image was uploaded along with a string. So we're going to go ahead and keep that, but we are going to delete this. Instead, we're going to add the extension of the file. So we're going to use path extension name file.original name. Now notice that we're storing all of this inside of this variable storage, which we're then using within the multer object in here. All right, so storage is one option of the multer object. We can add more. Another one is called limits. Limits lets you set a limit on the file size of the images. So let's go ahead and use file size, and we're only gonna accept images that are within one megabyte in size. One megabyte is equivalent to one million. All right, let's go back to the GitHub and notice this option here of any. This allows the user to upload multiple images. So let's go ahead and use that as well. And we're just gonna paste it right here in the multer object. The downside to using this is that it allows users to upload different file types. And of course, we don't want that. We only want them to upload images. So to counter that, we have to use an option of file filter. This allows us to filter out any file types that are not images. So let's copy this code and we're gonna paste it right under here. We can delete the contents from inside the function. We can also delete the rec. And we don't necessarily have to call this function file filter. Let's change it to check file type. All right, and here let's create a variable called file types. And this is gonna contain the file types that we wanna accept. So we're gonna add JPEG, PNG, and JPG. Now let's create a variable called extension name. Let's use the variable we just created. And we're gonna test if the extension name of the file that we have coming in is equivalent to one of these. We have to use two lowercase because sometimes the extension names come in as uppercase. And we're also gonna check the MIME type of the file that we have coming in. Let's test, only this time we're gonna check for MIME type. All right, so these two variables either have true or false coming in depending on if the user actually uploaded one of these file types. So let's use an if statement that is gonna check if MIME type and extension name are equal to true. If they are, that means that the user did upload an image. At this point, we're gonna return a callback function with a parameter of null and another one of true. Otherwise, we're gonna return a callback function that says, please upload images only. All right, now that this function is complete, we can add it as an option in here. So we're gonna use file filter. And for this one, we have to use a function with rec, file, and cb. And in here, we're gonna make a function call to check file type. We have to add file and cb as parameters. All right, the multi object is now complete. Now let me show you the index.ejs file. And remember this function, send queued images to server. We made a fetch request to a route called upload, and it's a post route. So let's go ahead and create that route now. We're gonna create it right under our get route. And this is where we're gonna use the multer object. And here we're gonna check for three things. Number one, if all of the tests passed. Number two, if the user didn't upload anything. And number three, if there was an error. If there was an error, it means that the user either uploaded an image that is bigger than the limit of one megabyte, or one or more of their files are not equivalent to JPEG, PNG, or JPG. All right, in this case, everything went smoothly. So we're gonna send back a status code of 200. And we're gonna grab that response in the front end through this response here. So if response that status is not equal to 200, we're simply gonna reload the page. All right, this means that the user did not upload an image. So let's send a message back to the front end that says, please select an image to upload. All 
we're going to set a status code of 400 in this case. Otherwise, there was an error. So let's check which error it was. If the error is please upload images only, then that's what we're going to send back to the front end. Otherwise, we're going to send photo exceeds limit of one megabyte. All right, we're ready to upload images. The first thing that I'm going to do is check if my error messages are working. So I'm not going to upload anything. I should get an error that says, please select an image to upload. Now I'm going to upload an image that is bigger than the limit. So we should get an error for that as well. All right, there we go. Photo exceeds limit of one megabyte. Now I'm going to upload some images that I know are going to pass all of the tests to see if they actually get uploaded. All right, I want to delete this one because I know that one's not going to pass the tests. Sure enough, I don't get any error messages. And if I look in my uploads folder, here are the images that I just uploaded. Now we need to get access to these images so we can send them back to the front end. So let's go into the get route and create an array called images. Let's get access to the images with FS reader. Let's include the path to the images. If we don't get an error accessing the images, then we want to use for each and we want to store each one of these files inside of the images array. And once we do that, we want to render the index file along with the images. So we're going to use this variable to access these images in the front end. But we also have to add an else statement in here just in case we get an error. So we're going to go ahead and console log the error. All right, now let's get access to those images in the front end. Let's create a variable called saved images. And to access these images, we have to use stringify. All right, now that we have the images, we're going to add an if statement and we're going to check if there's any images inside of that array. If there is, we're going to call on a function called display saved images. Let's go ahead and create that function right here. So this function is very similar to the display queued images. So we're just going to go ahead and copy this code. And we're going to paste it right in here. Let's change queued images array to saved images, which is the array that has all of the images that are coming in from the server. And for source, these images actually do have a URL which is HTTP localhost port 3000 and they're inside of a folder called uploads. We also have to include the name of the image and here delete queued image. We're going to change this to delete saved image. And instead of outputting them in the queued div, we're going to output them in the saved div. All right, now let's create this delete saved image function. All right, and here we have to keep track of the images that we're deleting off of the screen. So this is where we're going to use the delete images array. And we're going to push the images that get deleted off of the screen. And we also have to delete the images from the saved images array itself. So we're going to use splice. We're going to delete that index. And that's the only thing we want to delete. So we're going to add a one. All right, so now that we updated the saved images array, we want to call on the display saved images to update the images that you see on the screen. All right, so if we look at our project now, 
we click refresh, we should see the images that we got back from the server. And if we click on the delete button, then these two images that we have just deleted are now going to be stored instead of the delete images array. We want to send this array over to the server so we can delete those images from the uploads folder. And in order to delete those, we have to click on this button. So we're going to have to add an event listener to that button so it can send those images to the server and we can delete them from the folder. All right, so let's add an event listener to that button. So we're going to do saved form, add event listener, submit. All right, we're going to use eprevent default in here because we want to call on a function called delete images from server. All right, let's go ahead and create that function. And here, we're gonna make a fetch request to a route called delete, which we're gonna create in a moment. And this is gonna be a put method. And whenever we're sending data, like an array, we have to include these headers. All right, in the body, we want to send over the delete images array, but we have to use JSON stringify before we add it in here. So now we can add it. Once we make that request, we're going to catch the response using promises. So let's grab the response in here. So if the response status is not equal to 200, meaning it's not successful, then we're going to throw in error. And we're going to grab the error message using response status text. If there's no error, then we want to delete the images that are within the delete images array. And we want to output a success message in the server message. And the message is going to be stored in status text. And we also want to change the color of the server message to green so let's do background color and we're going to go with hex code d4 e d d a and we're also going to change the color of the text and let's go with 1b 5e 20. all right if we do have an error though we have to use a catch for that. And in this case, we're going to set the server message equal to error. And we also want to change the style. So users can know that this is an error message. And we actually can use the same colors that we used in here. So we can just copy this. All right, almost done. We can't use this route yet because we haven't created it. So let's go ahead and create it right under the post route. So first thing we want to do in here is get access to the delete images array that we got coming in from the front end so to access that we're going to use rec body and then we're going to use delete images which is the name of the array that we're having come over from the front end we can actually do a console log of images so you guys can see all right so i'm going to refresh this and i'm going to delete this one and this one i'm going to click this button nothing's going to happen yet but if you pay attention to the console you can see that these are the names of those two images. So now that we have these two names, we can delete them from the uploads folder. 
All right, so we're gonna check if delete images is equal to an empty string. This means that the user did not select an image to delete. So in that case, we're gonna set status message equal to please select an image to delete. All right, we're gonna set the status to 400 in that case. Otherwise, we're gonna delete each one of those images from the uploads folder. And we're gonna use for each to do this. And this is where we're gonna use the unlink file that we created at the beginning of the project. And we wanna unlink or delete this file. So first, let's add the path and then plus image. And once we do that, we want to send back a status message that says successfully deleted. All right, now we wanna send back a status code of 200. All right, let's try this out. So I'm gonna click refresh. I'm gonna click this one and this one. I'm gonna click delete. And now it says successfully deleted. I'm gonna click refresh and those are no longer in our saved in server images. I'm also gonna check if, if I just click delete without selecting any images, it's gonna give me this error. All right, everything is working good. And that's gonna wrap it up for part number two. In part number three, instead of saving the images inside of the file system, we're gonna show you how to save the images in a database. Because if you think about it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to save the images in the file system because what if you have a lot of users are you really going to have them save their images in one folder it's not going to make a whole lot of sense so it's more practical to store them in a database and somewhere like amazon web services that's what we're going to show you how to do in part number three i'll see you guys then thank you very much for watching